Ladies and gentlemen, all rise for the Rank Kings Court. to the courts. The Rank King is here. That's me. Joined, as always, by my fellow Knights of the Round Table, Ryan Botash, Gregory Malik. I didn't know we got upgraded. We got upgraded. Nice. Uh, well, don't go, go to your heads. We're not, we're not peasants anymore. I love this. I feel so esteemed right. now. Your boys are part of the show. It's it, You have to have a little bit of Transparency. What's up, Forringer? Him. What's up, Morgan? Knew that Forringer was going to be in the chat. Morgan, always wonderful. But yes, I'll stop. I'll drop this British accent right now because I ain't doing that the whole time. For this. Oh, why not? I, dude, <laughs> that's hard to do, man. Don't, don't make him do that. <laughs> but yes, welcome everybody. It is six thirty Tuesday. That means you are in one place and one place only, and that is the Court of the Ranking on Twitch. What's up, everybody? How are we doing, boys? We're doing good. We're back for another week. Didn't get canceled again, so that's always good. Again, being the key. Again. Yet. Yeah. Yet. Yeah. We haven't been canceled, so. Nah, nah, no. Nah, this will not be. We're we're a wholesome show, unlike some of the other things you see on Twitch. There's a little bit of a little bit of class and royalty that goes along with it, boys. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but no, I mean, I have the authority of the monarchy. If we ever were to get canceled, and we'll just secede. Ship away. Start our own show. We'll pillage everyone on our way out, by the way. Does, can the king get dirty? Is he allowed to? Or no? Is that what we're for? The king get dirty? Oh, no. Doing <laughs> <laughs> with his voice. Well, oh, now I see the night thing. an accent. What the uh, people <laughs> of Aston use uh, to sound different and uh, than what they normally are. It's all right. It escapes us all sometimes. It's all right. Uh, Forger, always our top commenter. Uh, Grind Project Forger. God love you in the chat, brother. Glad you're here. Let's, before we get started, uh, let's have a vote. Would you be so kind, Squire, as to read where the court of the Rank King is taking place here Tuesday at 6.30? All right, only since you asked. The Rankings Court is live today from the Union Fitness Studios, located on the North Shore of Pittsburgh. Union Fitness is more than a traditional gym. It is a place where you can transform yourself inside and out, with a variety of classes based around fitness, yoga, strength, and performance training. At Union Fitness, they believe that it is their duty to hold themselves and their clients to a higher standard. They practice what they preach and uphold the values that make Union Fitness the community that it is. Go to unionfitness.com today to sign up for a consultation. Through union, there is strength. Let's go. That felt good. I'm so happy because usually I'm the one that has to read that on every show I'm on for some reason. (laughs) Well, you like reading it. I I know you've been doing it a lot, Greg, so I thought I'd spread the love around. Thank you for giving my tongue a a break. What a great king. What a great king. I I, I am nice to deal with sometimes with my rules um but i mean you know if there's ever a chance i'm in there you know i'll be the first one to jump in for the ad read even though i'll be stumbling over words you know how it is Mm -hmm. but reading's tough um, before we get into tonight's topic which is a big one by the way i'm very very excited for uh justin boyd if you're not in this chat for this i'm gonna get angry because you made a big deal about not being on for a guest tonight so not calling you out i'm just letting you know you need to be in here for this 
Uh, let's talk about it last week. Um, 824. Brought on Josh. It's a good time. Good guest. Good uh, conversation. Now it's all the transpired of who won. Oh, uh, no. No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You have no right to bring I, it up. Technically, no. Austin did win. For the, technically, for the viewers at home, Austin did win. He won by one vote. So we can only assume who that one vote was. And we can also assume how he decided to cast that vote because... My hands are clean. I did nothing. We also made him aware that it was tied beforehand and then suddenly had the realization, did I remember to vote? Yeah. Yeah. All I'm saying is... If only Greg would have voted, it probably would have went went the other way. All I'm saying is that the uh, monarchy works in very mysterious ways. Four hundred said he voted for Josh. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Ooh, and you can see how dark my entire room just got. Yeah, what is this? Wow. It what happens when the sun goes down that quick. So it's in order to not look like thirty <laughs> days a night, turn that on real quick. Wow, the king just the king just got up and turned the light on. I got nervous for a sec. I got nervous when I saw that the lights go out because I thought that oh god, he's about to get raided. <laughs> now this fortress uh, is always built with intention to survive any onslaught. I mean, it's, I mean it's Butler County. Who the fuck's gonna pillage that? Let's be real. <laughs> but uh, Austin, for your movie rankings, someone did comment on the lobster. He said, "What did yeah, you guys see in the lobster?" That. It was uh, Will Marshall. He said, "What do you guys see in the lobster that he didn't see?" So I, I'm assuming he wasn't a big fan of that one. So the lobster is a very unique uh, movie to digest, which is why I was impressed that Josh had it on his list himself. Only he had it a lot higher. I mm. I was all right with it. I didn't think it was. I mean, I didn't think it was more than like number ten on the list. But I will say that it it goes a long way of a dark comedy of finding love that I thought was hilarious that it's like ear, you either find love or you get turned into an animal of your choosing <laughs> So literally you find love or you lose your humanity mm. as that is very dark in its own. Right. And of all the uh, animals, you're like, I don't want to be a lobster. I'm going to turn into a lobster. And she said, that's an excellent choice. I don't think it would be my first choice. No, no, nah, probably not. Probably not mine either. Austin, I gotta ask. So, from just from you guys talking about the A twenty four films last week, I got kind of the understanding, and I and I think Josh brought this up is like most of them, they somehow start off like pretty standard, and then all of a sudden you get smacked in the face by something topsy turvy, sci fi related, mm-hmm. essentially, and that's kind of the. I don't think they intend to do it that way, but that's the gist I got. So, is it fair to say that for people who maybe like Black Mirror or something oh, like that. If you like Black Mirror, you'll like a lot of these movies. That's it's what I... The, it's not the um, intention of every director for, like, something to... Like I said, The Lobster starts off with a very, like, true, like, honest story of finding love. It's like, oh, yeah, here's the weird shit. You're going to be an animal if you're not. Like, it, it doesn't intend to do it that all. Mm-hmm. Like, there are plenty of movies such as Uncut Gems and uh, like eighth grade that don't provide that like odd like sci-fi oddity that it brings or like it's weird oddity but there are certain a lot of movies that have that complexion and that's the ability of being in it i i don't even the thing is they're getting like i don't know if they're working with netflix so i don't even know if i can like we talked josh and i talked about this last week i don't know if you could technically call them an indie company anymore but that is the presence of it is that being in an indie company, you're able to experiment a little bit more mm. with uh, things that the public wouldn't normally put in a film. So, uh, Last question on this one. Do you think we will ever see a potential A24 film be pushed as like a blockbuster style format? Do you think they will ever get into that realm? I want to say yes, because okay. the ability of the pressure and everything that's getting put on them, I don't think they'll crack. I, don't, I never believe they will. And they've made such... Most of their films have been like in the 90-some percentage of Rotten Tomatoes. And again, that goes a long way, depending on how you feel about that. But most of their films, if not, like I said, most of all of them, 
have been primarily successful. So there's been like a couple that I can mention that are like 20s, maybe 30%. Mm, okay. But we are done with that conversation and we are moving on to tonight's topic. Wubba lubba dub dub! We're talking all things Rick and Morty tonight. Uh, I first discovered this show back when I was, I want to say, maybe a sophomore in college. Okay. All right. I don't want to say I was a freshman because I think I was that didn't even come out yet. But my roommate was like, hey, you need to watch this. Like, I really like the humor and everything. This sounds like your kind of thing. I watched the pilot and I literally fell in love with it. I mm. said, this is the type of show that I want. Like, this has the absolute weirdness that every sci-fi show needs with an adult comedy aspect that is, in my honestly personal opinion, untouched. I think it's one of the best shows on television right now. Season five is coming out soon. I think, uh, I think it's the next of, week, isn't it? Is it next week? I think, or end of the month, I think. I, whatever it is, I guess it's I think it's time to do it. I thought yeah, it, was awesome. it actually is a great time for this. But yeah, uh, I'm very, very excited for uh, this. I've, I've watched every single season up to this point. If you don't know, no free ads it's on Hulu. Check that shit out. It is by far the writing, the simplicity and complexity of some storylines. It's amazing. The characters are great. And we'll get into it later, but a lot of it has like a more free flow kind of feeling now i want to ask you boys this because i i want to make sure you've heard of this obviously but have you seen it at all like have you watched any episodes so i i tried to binge the whole thing i got halfway through season four i didn't finish it yet but you're crazy man you always you you i i love your i love your commitment to stuff though i I really actually it's actually a good show i didn't think i'd like it uh, Meadowhead Morris says the new season comes out this Sunday, the six twenty. Oh, I love that. Austin, I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you. I've never been interested in it. Okay. And one of the reasons that I'm excited for this show that we're about to do is because I want you to sell this to me because for there are a lot of people in my life who love this show. And I've seen clips. I've seen like, I, I understand kind of the cult, the cult, pop culture references and all that stuff. But I've just never had the desire to actually sit down and watch an episode in my life. And I don't know if it's because I just find it like too out there for me, mm-hmm. which is weird because I like it, it originated on Adult Swim. And fuck, I loved I loved Adult Swim when I was like in high school and college and shit. So, which have you got before we before we get into it? I'm sorry to cut you off, but. Um, have you guys seen like a, that Adult Swim trend that's been trending on TikTok and everything lately? For they have like Adult Swim for how long has like made their intros like zero zero like like weird and everything, mm-hmm. and everyone now is making trying to make their own version of like an Adult Swim opening. Oh yeah, uh, okay. oh yeah. I love, it. I love it. Like the creativity that's been going into these. I really hope they use some of these for commercials. Oh, I, I feel like knowing adults when they're going to try to, like, make fun of this or poke fun of it in some way. Uh, but, no, the reason I'm excited for this show is because, Austin, I want you to sell this to me yeah. in, like, the best way that I know you possibly can. Because I know how passionate you are about this, and I feel like you're the best person to do this to me. So Yeah, I, I feel like yeah. you'll do a good job. So, so, so ranking, my take, mind is take, completely open take it away. to <laughs> letting you infect me with knowledge if All you right, will. Well, uh, let's start off with uh with our first radical ranking then boys all righty so the first radical ranking we're getting into every show basically on adults women I mean, a lot of shows do this but we're going to be talking about the top parodies what does this show parody that's absolutely hilarious that makes this, like I said, one of the best shows that is around? And I know, like I saw in the chat, Morgan, you got no interest in this either, so I got to sell it to you too, which I'm pretty sure 
why hasn't Vo like sold it to you yet? If he's been binging it, but it's on me, I guess. That's fine. Um, she, she didn't want to watch it with me. She didn't want to watch no. it. She was like, yeah, I'm not watching that. It's like no. a cartoon for adults. Oh, no. No, that, honestly, like, I didn't think I would like it, but after a couple episodes, I was like, this is pretty good. I, this, I can't stop watching it. I, I feel you, man. And uh, let's start off, like I said, the top parodies. What does the show make fun of that's absolutely hilarious? Number five, Mad Max. <laughs> Alrighty, okay. I like I like the the picture. I love the the like the the muscle bound dude with the bucket for the skull because that is exactly a Mad Max parody. I can appreciate that. Which he's can... a very nice individual when he eventually takes off his mask. You just don't see it. <laughs> but um, the whole point of this is that their family, their mom and dad, are going through basically at the end of season two. Spoilers, just three, two, by, one. By all means. Um, there is a divorce happening, and to get away from all of the internal family struggles, uh, the daughter, Summer, wants to just go on a ransack of adventures to take her mind off of it. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Morty uh, is just like, we know we need to try to fix things, and what ends up happening in this is they end up going for a power source, opening up in this Mad Max-like universe, Morty ends up getting stuck with a needle, and so his hand literally grows to about the size of him, about his entire arm. Yeah. And it's it's essentially has its mind of its own from its old owner. So it, it leads Morty on an adventure to try to uh, take revenge on the people that slaughtered him in his village. And then you have Summer, who basically moves in with this buckethead guy, and they try to start a family, and it's like, what did you come up from work? He's like, oh, well, I guess I didn't have to kill everybody. You yeah. cheesy. Like it's. He's like sitting on the couch eating like potato chips and everything. <laughs> yeah, and their like neighbors like whining about their trash like yeah. being in the yeah. place. And they're in a fucking post-apocalyptic universe. Like it's by far one of like I I had watched Mad Max and I said I'm gonna see this how they work it in cartoon form. Man, it's good. It, it like and it's the opening episode to season three, so. It, it was a very wonderful treat to see a big storyline such as Mad Max being treated as such for this. Okay. Greg, have you watched much Mad Max at all, or like no? I saw the I saw the newer one. I didn't. I think I saw like bits of um, of uh, Thunderdome. Like I think that was the third one or something with Tina Turner and that. And but that's aside from that. But I saw that. But I saw the newer one with Tom Hardy in it. It's excellent. Excellent. You know, if we're here, you know we love Tom Hardy, as Josh would say. Damn so. right we do. All righty. Let's get into number four. Two in this one. Almost had a three. Two in this one. Inception and a Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> okay, so so I, already I can see Freddy. I can see he, he has swords for hands, so... I'm intrigued. Actually, well, it's Scary Terry, right? Thank you. Thank you. So that is Scary Terry. So yeah. you are aware, Greg. All right. What ends up happening in this is to get Morty a better grade in math, they enter his math teacher's dreams through this device. Oh, God. And what slowly ends up happening is they get themselves into situations where they need to go into another person person's, in that yeah. person's dream. To get out of the situation and what they end up finding is a world inhabited by what scary terry to which every sentence he has ends with bitch like <laughs> and it's just like oh my god like it is it, the, they had a one woman in there like mrs pancakes like she is the second person they go into the dream with and she literally just all she says you don't know me you don't know me and they just <laughs> They just keep going into dream after dream, and they end up help. They end up helping Scary Terry because his last line in this is that you can run, but you can't hide. And <laughs> Morty's like, "Hey, Rick, I know he says we can't, but why don't we just hide?" Yeah. <laughs> and they, they, they hide for like two hours. He can't find him. <laughs> can't find him. So he goes home, and you find out he has an actual family that looks exactly like him. Uh -huh. And he gets mad because he didn't kill anybody today, and she's like. He like slams. She's like, "No, oh, I, I didn't get anybody, bitch." And she's like, "No, no, you leave that. Don't bring work home." Yeah. And they end up going into Scary Terry's dream, 
to find out that he was in what was known as scare school. Mm -hmm. Oh my and God. It yeah, it's, just, it's amazing. It's a rabbit hole of just all this shit that it's, they give him like a nice sweater. Then he's like, Oh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, um, it's a great, I, I never thought those two movies could interact with each other in a parody like this. And mm. man, it shines in this. How has no one, like, first off, the idea of Inception and Nightmare on Elm Street together is incredible. It's so, they go hand in hand. I'm amazed that no one else has come up with this except for Rick and Morty. That's phenomenal. And then I think, <laughs> and when I think about, like, some a terrifying person and then talking about going to scare school and being mocked and bullied, that's also something that's, like, a trope, too, because I'm pretty sure they do that in, like, the live-action Grinch one to talk about why he's such a miserable bastard or something. So, okay, I can get it now. All right. If you get that, you're going to get number three, which I love more than anything. Derek and I have talked about this. Uh, again, combining two aspects, two trilogies, I guess anthologies. Uh, number three, The Avengers and Saw. Oh God! If I if I get another ranking of you with your goddamn oh, saw traps, I'm I am walking out of here. There's no disgusting traps no. in this one. I Thank promise. you. So, background of what actually happens here: uh, there are these individuals known as the Vindicators, and what ends up happening is that this show, this episode, exploits over dramatic and overpriced like angles of superhero films mm -hmm. because this is the third meetup of this group we don't even get to see one or two but we know that rick and morty work with the vindicators in number one but they weren't invited for number two and they had no choice but to uh i guess morty wanted to go back to number three they wanted to like actually meet up and what ends up happening is rick thinks that he's taking all his attention to the vindicators so one night, Rick gets incredibly drunk to the point where, quote unquote, I'm not even joking, he shits all over himself. <laughs> like they wake up and he's just covered in puke and shit. Hmm. And what ends up happening is that Rick single-handedly kills the villain and all his henchmen that they go through and instead sets up various saw traps for the Vindicators to get through. And they a screen pops down, he's like, Ah, oh, it's the Vindicators! You think you're so cool! If you think you're so cool, and di disable this bomb in five minutes. <laughs> and it's just like, and literally one of the challenges is like, what? Make five uh, free throws, I think, in basketball. It's like, <laughs> I, I'm running out of ideas here. Make five baskets. That's, that's, pretty, all that's pretty tough for some people. I mean, Shaq, hey. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, the characters in this are amazing. Uh, you range from your Star-Lord-esque uh, guy that is actually just a wimp. You have a guy that conducts ghost trains uh, with his magic whistle. You have a woman made of stars, a man of a million ants. That is his literal name. Huh. A man of a million ants. And finally, a uh, crocubot. Half crocodile, <laughs> half robot. All cold blooded, apparently. And <laughs> this is, I mean, it's so much. Like, it's the aspect that the drunker he gets, like, the worst traps there are. Mm -hmm. Like, and Morty just goes through these like it's another day. He's like, yep, this literally happens all the time. I'm just going to go do it. And they're just freaking out, not knowing what to do. And we, you know, it's, it's a great episode, man. Oh, man. All right. Well, understanding you and your love for everything saw i can understand why you appreciate this parody i will give you that yeah. on this uh so the event so for this like what is it the vindicators and all that uh is there like any preface premise on what exactly they are vindicating just out of curiosity i think they're just vindicating justice trying to preserve justice throughout the world okay kind of I don't know. At the end of the episode, Logic performs about a guy named Noob Noob. Yeah. So. Logic is in this. Noob Noob's his yeah. favorite. Okay, so I will get. Okay, I will give credit to this though. One of the few things that I do love, that I do know for a fact, because I love Logic. I have heard the cameo of Rick and Morty on one of his albums, and it blew my mind. Especially when Rick is just going off about old Logic versus new Logic, 
and Morty's yeah. and Morty's just like, I don't know, whatever. And then Rick is getting very specific about how much better old logic is, and I love that. Uh, I'm realizing right now that I know that one thing is not going to be in here, and I know a lot of people are going to panic. Don't worry. It's it's six, okay? It's not as good as some of these. <laughs> I know. Believe me. I know. I already know it's coming. But we're going to hit number two, and uh, that is The Purge. This, this one's my favorite. This is so like, <laughs> This really one's great. That it's, they go to a world that I believe they weren't even supposed to be at. Like, mm. Morty noticed a girl in trouble only to realize this family comes up. He's like, oh, yeah, welcome to the annual purge. Like, it happens at night. Like, it's like, oh, are you going to kill people? He's like, no, I'm probably just going to stay inside. But don't come after me, though. Mm. Otherwise, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> They're overly polite about it to the point until, like, the purge actually happens. Yeah. Of course, then they're out, like, murdering people for just no reason. And Rick is loving this. Like, he's just like, oh, murder for no reason. Sweet. They're like, and, uh, the people are like cat, farmer, yeah, like, know, Amish like people. Cat, like, like, not under cat, like, cat, but, like, almost yeah. like that. It, And there's a particular scene that always lives with me with this episode. And it's when all Morty has to do to have sanctuary in this home. <laughs> yes listen to this old man's story yes but instead of just being a like a, he has an entire script instead of just listening to it it's like opening page one <laughs> curtain that closes is, like it's all he's, he's reading everything in everything between. yeah and he like makes one comment at the end because the guy wanted criticism he's like nope nope get the hell out of my house nope i asked you <laughs> yeah. take it. i wanted to know and just shit all over it and what happens is morty actually throws him down a flight yes. of stairs accidentally wow. killing him and then yeah. he just goes on this murderous rampage of trying to take on the global <laughs> of this entire fucking episode he's like fast forward to three three weeks later when you're alive <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> i died when he said that he's just like laying on the ground he's like fast forward to three weeks you're alive asshole <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I appreciate what you told me about the beginning, too, about how they're, like, overly polite during The Purge. And I feel like that's something that in The Purge movies, they just don't, they just completely, like, gloss over. It's like, odds are, I feel like the majority of citizens want nothing to do with no. The Purge whatsoever. It's ridiculous, like, up to this point. I'm not hating on The Purge movies, but this newest one, it's like, actually, when you're in 24 hours... And then what happens afterward is that it just doesn't stop. People are like, just, oh, yeah, well, there are laws. Fuck that. I'm not listening well, to this. Well, have you ever watched the the TV show on USA Network? Because I watched the first season. That was, I never saw that. That was, that was interesting. Like the, in, like, the very last episode, the dude there was, like, had, like, an entire storyline about hunting down specific people that either wronged him during the year or something like that. And when the alarm goes off, he just immediately – gets rid of this cold-blooded killer vibe that he had and he's like oh i'll see you next year and meanwhile the guy that's just like laying there trying to protect his sister after he was ready to kill him is just like fuck this and then just shoots him <laughs> so the number one parody and again it's not going to be what anybody thinks it's a actually from one of the newest seasons it had me dying i love this um, number one is heist films. Now, are we talking like every, like... Every single heist movie that's ever been invented. Okay. It's, Pretty it's much, invented. yeah. Um, Bo, have you seen this episode? I actually just watched this one maybe a couple days ago. Okay, like... so the premise is that Rick cannot stand heists mm -hmm. at all. He thinks they're very predictable. And one, they are literally like, well, we got to get this job. And in order to do that, we got to get this crew. We got to get this crew together. That he's like, there are specific meets up for the crew. He's like, the basic Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, line was like, you son of a bitch. I'm in. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that happens literally as a trope in this episode about like 100 different times to the point where like, everyone's like, you son of a bitch, I'm in. And it, it it's it's it happens every time it happens every time someone sees somebody mm -hmm. to the point where uh it becomes rick versus this robot that basically creates a heist algorithm that'll spray a dust and like everyone's like you son of a bitch i'm in what are we getting we gotta we gotta meet up with the crew we gotta get a vehicle like and in order to stop this rick uh incorporates the help of many of his fallen uh characters 
from the past. Uh, one that I won't mention because he's on. He might be on my list for later. But one being Elon Tusk. Elon Tusk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, I just, get the picture. The, the, the weird thing is that there's nothing weird about him. It's just it's Elon Musk with tusks. Yeah. Huh. That, that's what it is. <laughs> And he's like, well, we wouldn't trust regular Elon with shit, but you're doing the same shit with him. He's like, look, they didn't write me anything for this. I'm just Elon Musk with tusks. <laughs> right. I'm pretty sure Elon Musk voices his own self in this. I'm not entirely sure. That's, incre- that's, that's incredible I'm if he does. I'm pretty sure he did, yeah. In the credits, like, I'm pretty sure it had his like, name there. Thinking, instead of Teslas, I think they're Tusklas. And they Tusklas, got yeah. Of them. Like, yeah. It's, it's so funny to the point where, like, yes, in every heist film, like, there is an algorithm. Like, and it's it's widely exploited every time to the point where Rick goes, you people see nothing, like, don't boo, I've seen what makes you cheer. Mm-hmm. Like, it's 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 pretty bad. Hmm. And it's, it's a shame that I am, like, I mean, we've all seen it. We've all seen the heist films. Um, I want to go on record that the one people are probably thinking of was the uh, Anatomy Park with Jurassic Park. That's number six for me. And essentially, Greg, for that one, they go into this... Uh, anatomy of this guy that has been basically just a bum in a Santa outfit. Okay. And I'm I'm talking like when he's like drunk, he's like, Oh, this is Ruben. He goes, "Mm, Pearl Harbor. Like, it's just like that kind of shit. Um, but what ends up happening is that Rick and this Aniba, Aniba create a Jurassic park kind of thing inside this guy's body (laughs) of like pirates of the pancreas, Mm -hmm. like, and, instead of dinosaurs the monsters are diseases such as hepatitis a hepatitis c like gonorrhea like oh all the this, this show's just out there like it's it's wonderful it, man and maybe, maybe amazing I, but about it, maybe that should have been on here at some point because it, it was such a success but for right now for me it's number six i yeah. know a lot of people are gonna like whine about how that's not out here though but. uh metalhead morris says honorable mentions to the a team slash ball fondlers Today. yeah <laughs> so again that that's going to be in later because that that's part of a segment later but yes there's a lot there's a lot in this that i virtually love and i will say it's already seven o'clock so i don't want to waste any more time boys so let's move on to radical ranking number two so with every great comedy comes a sort of tragedy, so to speak. And in my mind, a lot of shows aren't as successful if they don't have a tragic element in a comedy setting. You see this a lot with, I know a lot of people don't like it, but I think it's very successful. Bojack Horseman. You see that oh, in a very- not this show again. I, I, I don't give a shit. I'm telling you, this show is good, man. It's good. I don't good. know. That, I did try to watch that one. I, I couldn't get into very, it. very, like- sarcastic way of humor that you would think of in a very depressing setting which yeah. is amazing i know it's hard to think of but it's like but but yeah in my mind these are the top rick and morty emotional moments that make this show even more enjoyable to live with um number five simply titled i'm okay with this so background in this the episode first episode of season two which is in titled a wrinkle in time where rick and morty and summer end up breaking the time length and splitting time into like a hundred thousand different realities how in order to get back (laughs) they have to wear the yeah yeah exactly in order to get back they have to wear these time collars but unfortunately summer's links up and then morty and rick's don't because morty's is broken and what's up happening is that rick and morty both fall into the vast amount of space and in a weird way, Rick saves Morty by giving him his collar that worked. And you even see that because the Morty disappears in another universe and Rick goes literally screaming to the sky, what did you do? What did you do to me, Morty? Mm. And this Rick basically says, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. And then he finds the collar. And he's like, oh shit, I'm not okay with this. I'm not okay with this. <laughs> he basically is like, he's very he's very open to the fact that he's agnostic in this and he's just like literally praying like please god please god hold my prayers like try to fix it and then it works he goes oh yeah it works 
fuck you god you got nothing on me <laughs> <laughs> so he has like that one moment where he's just like ready to accept yeah. everything that's about to come yeah, to him and, and he and it back. and just immediately comes back okay very willing to accept the fact that he might die here and immediately as soon as he sees the shimmer he's like nope no i'm not doing it nope mm -hmm. <laughs> um Let's go to number four. This is a big one for spoiler reveal. So spoilers in three, two, one. The death of Bird Person. I vaguely remember Deke talking about how how much this hurt him yep. when this happened. So, so Bird Person is Rick's best friend. And Allegedly. And thing is that Bird Person ends up essentially getting engaged. So to, quote, unquote, one of Summer's friends, Tammy, mm -hmm. which I think is... She's like 18, but he's a giant, like immortal bird, like that's like been around for how long? And what ends up happening is Tammy turns out to be a secret agent of the government that's been hunting Rick, and basically shoot him in the middle of the wedding reception. And this whole thing turns very dark very quickly. Uh, bird person is transformed into a robot cyborg known as Phoenix Person. And they incorporate a computer algorithm to have him work for that government. So essentially, he loses all identity. Mm, wow. Like It's a very like emotional moment because he didn't have a big place in the show, but whenever he was on screen, he was, like, you could tell, like, he was, like, the a main person that understood Rick because not a lot of people get that. Not a lot of people understand Rick like bird person did and rick didn't even want to go to the wedding he was like I, I i understand that he's a good person i want to wish him well but whenever i'm around stuff it never works out and sure enough and i believe at the end of this uh episode i think is when he turns himself into the uh into the government to save the family and everything yeah. But, yeah. but yeah bird person dies in this the character quote unquote of bird person dies and is reborn as phoenix person which is a very dark vader esque kind of asylum but that's what it is hmm. does phoenix uh, does phoenix person make a lot of cameos in the later seasons i'm guessing or one. Oh, just one okay yeah. and they they try not they tr they put little tropes in there to make it like oh we talked about this last time oh you're gonna get it like four seasons down the road like ah. we, we're like what the hell but give us more of that and then they're pricks about it but i love it so <laughs> um number three which doesn't seem as bad as you might think, but still, the real reason behind Wubba Lubba Dub Dub. Uh, say, say that again, Austin. The, the real meaning behind what? The real meaning behind Wubba Lubba Dub Dub. I mean, I was waiting for you to actually use your voice. That was the kind of I going into it. that, but. No. Wubba Lubba Dub Dub! There, there you Thank go. You. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. That's what we want. Thank you. Oh, yes. Um, so, one of Rick's catchphrases that he uses all the time to, like, you know, be silly and everything. We find out actually when uh, Morty goes and searches for him and finds Bird Person, and he's like, "I don't know what humans eat. Here's some rocks and worms." It's like, "Oh, okay." And they were talking of like, "Well, Rick says that all the time." Well, actually, according to Bird Person, the real re meaning behind "Wubba Lubba Dub Dub" means, "I am in great pain." Oh, it's scary. It's scary because he says it a lot and it makes you feel like he's kind of trapped in this, like, whether it's of ironic, ironic of succession of intelligence, like he believes he's virtually trapped in a universe that he can't escape from. So he does all this weird shit to kind of keep his mind off things. But in the, in the end, he is a very like complex, depressed person. So Wubba Lubba Dub Bub is this coping mechanism, basically. Exactly. Pretty much. It's huh. very... Okay. It's, it, it's not meant to be dark, because he says it in a very joking matter, but we find out later that he, it's actually, like, a very... Like, he's in pain. Mm -hmm. like, he, he's very hurting inside. Hmm. Number two is out there, and I'm going to, like... I'm going to say this very... I'm not saying I'm questioning intelligence, you guys, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it more complex than the others reality check so what ends up happening for this episode is entitled something love potion something basically rick creates a love potion to help this girl 
fall in love with Morty. And what ends up happening is that it gets spread around to the entire school Mm -hmm. dance that everyone is essentially trying to be with Morty. And it just keeps accelerating. Like to counter it, Rick adds all these different animal parts and instead makes them like giant cockroach kind of creatures that want to bite off his head to like, that's how like cockroaches mate. Yep. They express mating that way by biting off the head of the male. Hmm. That's how that worked until they get it so like he's mixing dinosaur, koala, all this different shit where they become Cronenbergs as like the David Cronenberg films to the point where the entire world is infected. I mean, we're talking Israel, Canada, Asia, Peru, like everywhere is infected. So in order to uh, escape, they basically create a time ripple to blow up a version of themselves in a different universe. They run in and they take their place in that universe as if nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this right here, this picture is them burying their own corpses, but in another universe. And they just, they just act like nothing happened. Because it's it's no different than their own. There are multiple universes that have that have very big differences. But this one, it was just like their own. That's why they were able to sneak in. Wow. But yeah. Can you imagine that? So, so now from like from that point on, just every episode now emulates from that specific universe. From that universe, yeah. <laughs> that's absurd. I'm telling you, man. Like that's it's kind of where that like there wasn't really a plot story kind of thing until this kind of this episode started. Right. And once it ended. I was like, like Morty is very traumatized by the end of this. Like Rick goes and grabs a beer, like it's nothing. But Morty's, I mean, he's a kid in like middle school, high school, and he just buried himself. Right. Well, it's fucking traumatic, to say the least. Mm-hmm. However, nothing is as emotional as this. I like got real. I almost teared up when I like saw this part. So, number one, Rick's attempted suicide. This is fucked, man. Like, it's fucked. So, in this episode, Rick meets up with an old flame, simply entitled Unity, Mm -hmm. which is literally a, I don't even know what you call it, though, like a a parasite kind of thing that controls other people. She she can be pretty much whatever she wants, whatever you want her to be. She's a planet. She's a planet of different individuals. Yeah. Hmm. That makes sense. And Rick had once had had feelings for Unity. They broke up. And now Rick wanted to get back with Unity and was making her do like, or I, she, she's mostly, it's mostly represented in the form of a woman. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm saying she. So with this, like he's making like them like create a show, then cancel the show mm-hmm. and then make it all about redheads and like all this other stuff. And suddenly he's away from his family to the point where he wants to completely be with this unified entity known as Unity. And Unity realizes that Rick is essentially poison to to it. Like, it was living fine, prospering. Rick came along, and then Unity started drinking, losing hosts, losing control. So what ends up happening is Unity dumps Rick to save her, to save itself, and to save Rick. And Rick is crushed by this. Like he, he very, he very much so pushes it off like it's nothing. And mm-hmm. then we see him go to the garage, to where this sad song plays over this entire mm-hmm. thing, this entire scene. He defrosts a creature, creature, puts a crystal, puts the creature under it, and the creature like his head explodes. And I'm like, okay, he's just experimenting until he sits down in the same spot. Mm -hmm. And the only reason he survives is because he passes out drunk. (laughs) But he does, he tries to kill himself in this episode and it's fucked. Like, it's like, whoa, like. Yeah, honestly, when I watched this one, I wasn't sure what he just tried to do. So I like went back to watch it again. I was like, did he really just try to do that? Like, yep. 
it's dark, man. Yeah. I mean, the show's not afraid to go there, which is great for creative purposes. And it's always, it's always like a good thing to express issues surrounding this. I think they had also like a get help number, I think attached to the end credits of this episode, which is always just a good thing to have. But a show can't be afraid to explore these issues. And that's why I'm glad that they did in a weird sense. Like I'm not condoning it or anything, of course, nothing of that, but, but yeah, this was by far the most emotional moment in the entire series up to this point for me. Understandable. I think we forget too, that with comedy, sometimes that there's also another side to it as well. well it's, it's where comedy comes tragedy. Yes. As, so, so yeah, unfortunately that I had to sour the mood a little bit, but um, it's all right. Those were our top Rick and Morty emotional moments. Let's get on with one of my, I'm so excited for this, the great debate. All right, sorry, I was looking at my phone. So we're back. <sighs> if you good. had seen the one Two Beers Deep, I had done a top 10 Rick and Morty side characters. Now- Great episode. Are, it was a good one. We are going to now draft our Rick and Morty side characters. And the side characters I want to be specifically like this while I'm talking, Brian Project, you know what to do, figure out that order. <laughs> What I'm going to do is simply this. No members of the family. No different versions of those characters. So okay. there's no different versions of Morty allowed in this. There's no oh. different versions of Summer, of, of Rick. Nobody. It has to be actual side characters for this. All right. Okay. Thankfully, uh, Four just had Austin, Vogue, Greg. Love that. I get to start off. And I will pick... Possibly the greatest side character of all the time. I love him to death. And uh, that is Mr. Uh, ooh -wee. That is uh, Mr. Poopy Butthole. <laughs> yeah. Bo, Greg, the guy is hilarious. He's this essential, like, yellow bean-like yeah. person with a top hat. And all he does a lot of... Ooh wee, ooh wee, go, oh gee, oh wee, like, and he is the center of one of the episodes where it's like a mind altering parasite to try to figure out who's real and like who's not. And what ends up happening at the end of that episode is Mr. Poopy Butthole is the last one there. And he's like, ooh, somebody passed me a pork chop. And he does, <laughs> and Beth is like, oh, is something wrong, Beth? And Beth shoots him. And it's actual blood. Like, yeah, he's a real yeah. person. And I was like, whoa, like, shit. What? She's like, no, what a, he's, he's been a family. Because like, they, they inhabit your memories and make you think of, like, positive memories. Mm -hmm. huh. And so she couldn't think of, like, a bad memory of him. So she thought he was a parasite. And it ends up that like, he's just a good person. But he ends up Aww. coming back in, like, later seasons and, like, various. Like, he's there for the heist thing. He's there for uh, a lot of endings of the series. Like, ooh, was that a good episode? Yeah, yeah he does that a lot. He does like, that a lot. Feels, he's like, got a whole, he's like, ooh, he's go right down like licorice. Ooh, 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 wee, ooh, wee. Like, <laughs> but yes, um, the greatest side character ever, Mr. Poopy Butthole. Greg, take it away, good sir. Oh, actually, Vozov, according to Grind Project. Oh, that's right. I'm, I'm You're always trying to skip me. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you're easily skippable. That's true. Yeah, well, I'm taking maybe one of the best characters, and that is Mr. Meeseeks. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Hi, <laughs> uh, Mr. Meeseeks! Look at me! <laughs> Greg, um, what ends up happening for this character is that you press a button on a box, mm -hmm. and this blue creature comes up. He's like, Hi, oh, Mr. Meeseeks! Look at me! And in order to essentially, quote-unquote, die <laughs> if you will um they have to complete a task that's the whole reason that the button is pushed okay so for instance if you wanted like your room clean it's like hey mr meeseeks clean my room he's like ooh wee let's go let's do it oh geez and 
he does it and he's like oh, i'm done and then poofs yeah <laughs> and then uh it was funny because jerry the dad asked mr meeseeks to for a couple strokes off his golf game like the one thing that's the one thing he wanted and what ends and up happening we'll they talk, just talk, couldn't talk, do it i'll talk, 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 talk about that later all right mr meeseeks greg you're up for your two picks where are we going all right, uh, Vo, please put up the graph for me. Uh, just kind of looking around right now. And then for for, peop for people's reference, uh, I'm literally looking at a screen that was the Rick and Morty secondary character bracket as my way to try to figure out what way I'm going to be leaning towards. Uh, well, I like that, actually. Yeah, you know what? Um, since you brought him up earlier, I feel like it's kind of the best way to go. Give me Bird Person. Good pick. Yep. Yeah, I feel like Bird Person's probably the best way to go in this one. That's an emotional pull. That's a tag of the heart strings. I love that, Greg. Thank you, thank you. I, I, I'm right there. I love to tug people in the heart. And uh, next one I'm going to go with, and just because, again, you brought him up earlier, give me Scary Terry. Yeah, that's a big one. That's another big one with Scary Terry. Uh, I thought I was going to get him, bitch. But, <laughs> uh, God, I, I just love because it's just at the end of every sentence, and you find out he has an actual family and shit that mm -hmm. literally looks just like him, and they're just living in this world of like going to scare school, and you know he's just he's trying, bitch. Like that's all he's <laughs> trying. He's just trying, man. But I love that. Bo, you're up for yours. Where are we going, bud? We're gonna go with Snuffles, oh, the family boy, dog. Snuffles. I thought it was a cat from the picture that I saw. It's a dog. It's a dog. Aw, oh, damn it. I should have taken it. <laughs> Shit. But, all right, grind project. Let's relax. Greg didn't already win. He has two picks. I have literally the best side <laughs> character of all that's literally named Mr. Booby Butthole. I don't want to hear shit yet for it. <laughs> um, I'm not going to go too much in Snuffles because he ties in a little bit later. Um, I'm going to go with my roundabout, my first one. Uh, give me Sleepy Gary. Okay. Sleepy Gary, essentially, that's all his, that's his actual name. He's like, he's like, what are we doing, Sleepy Gary? Uh, becomes a big part in the uh, Total Recall episode with the parasites. And Jerry believes that Sleepy Gary is Beth's husband. And, like, they've been best friends for years. And they, like, made love over Chewbacca for Star Wars. Like, it's, <laughs> it's great. It's, it's, it's crazy. Funny. They literally call him. He's like, we're every time he walks, they're like, we're trying to sleep here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sleepy Gary. Hi, yi, 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 yi. And then I gotta, I gotta think on this next one because if I don't, if I don't pick the right one here, this might come back to haunt me. So I gotta take a little bit. But I, I am loving all this. Uh, I'm loving all these characters, and what I will say for this is I, I'm not a big fan of the one. I'm going to take um, a history one that I talked about, and I'm going to take Aberdolf Linkler. <laughs> is this like the one that's the weird combination of Abraham Lincoln and Adolf Hitler? combination of a Abe Lincoln and Hitler. So, Damn. Uh, though, if you need a spelling for that, it I'm, is... I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> okay. um, the whole aspect of, like, we need to free all. But do we? Wait a minute. Like, it's like a, it's an evil <laughs> in the fucking skull of this character. And it's so weird. But it's it's by far one of the greatest like moments, I think, of TV when I saw these two characters. Like, oh, that's Abradolf Lincoln. Like, they did not just combine, like, Abraham Lincoln and Hitler. That's not, that's wrong. <laughs> but it's so right in a weird way. Joe is he's, not right he's insane, too. Well, obviously, if he's part Hitler. He's out, I mean, yeah. come on. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> but, all right, uh, Vo, you up for your next one, buddy. I'm going to go, I'm going to try to ple please Foringer on this pick. I'm going to go with Noob Noob. <laughs> noob Noob. So, Noob Noob, Greg, is like the little sidekick of the Vindicators. Okay. He's like, Boy, time for my first mission. And then instead of his mission, he's like cleaning up Rick's drunk diarrhea. Yeah. Like, like, here, you're cleaning this up. Oh, God damn it. Like, <laughs> he, 
He kind of strikes me as um, what was the guy from what was the character from Borderlands that you were telling me about? Who's like the really annoying one? Oh, claptrap. Yeah. Oh, claptrap. Um, <laughs> I just love that Jack Black's playing him though. I can't wait for that actual movie. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the um, I mean, he gets a song written about him by Logic at the end, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. So, noob noob at for vote. Greg, you are up for your last two. Okay, uh, just kind of going through some right now. Um, let's scroll for a sec. All right, I might as well just take him. Give me Squanchy. Squanchy! <laughs> Gosh. Uh, I hate the, uh, I, it's the one that I said I don't really like him. I'm not going to take him. But he literally is He's just like, oh, we're going to Squanch today. Like, <laughs> one of, like, the best per, one of the, like, the best men at, like, for a person's wedding. And he, like, breathes this stuff in, and he's able to, like, transform into this, like, giant cat creature. But he also, I think, is involved in, like, uh, what's that when you, like, oh, erotic asphyxiation. <laughs> so, <laughs> what a pick. What a pick, Greg. Like, hey, I'm trying to squatch here. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, what a pick. <laughs> so, so there's that. Not a fan of, by the way. Just throwing it out there. Not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. Just in case people are wondering. I had to make sure. Not a fan. It does not matter. Uh, you have one more, Greg. I already know where I'm going with, and it's because I remember the ranking you did on the show, and I thought it was hilarious. Ants in my eyes, Johnson. Fuck you, I wanted ants in my eyes. I loved... I loved the description you gave on the show. I thought it was hilarious. Derek thought it was hilarious. It's I mean, it's, just like, it's a guy with a convenience with a store, but instead of you know normal sight, he has ants in his eyes. Yeah. He can't, he's like, oh, we got TVs, <laughs> microwaves, furniture. I think I'm not really sure. I can't see. I have ants in my eyes. It, it, he like puts his on the stove. He's like, I also can't feel anything. And he just starts like coming on fire and everything. And he's like, I'm I'm a, I'm. I'm very, uh, I'm very hopeful that no one's stealing my stuff. Like, it's, it's very wonderful TV. Mm -hmm. I loved it so much. And, uh, oh, Bo, last pick. Last pick. Uh, it's one of Metalhead Mora's favorites. We're going to go with Fart. <laughs> wait, wait, who? Fart. Oh, Fart? <laughs> Um, so I, I forget what the actual, like, but that is the acronym of that. He's like a giant ball of gas that mm -hmm. poops gold. And he also has a beautiful voice and he sings, Goodbye, Moon Man. <laughs> <laughs> the Rick was like, Shut the fuck up about Moon Man. <laughs> but yeah, he, he's a little ball of gas with gems that poops gold. So the entire world is after him for that purpose. Oh, man. Man, it is good. Uh, I'm up for my last one. There's a lot. There's a lot that I want to choose from. There, There's a ton of side characters in the show. Oh, e crazy. Every episode. There's so many. Uh, I am... Uh, I'm gonna stay... Uh, I'm gonna stay in my lane. I'm gonna stay in, uh, quote-unquote, my... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Get out of my personal space! <laughs> Get out of my personal space. There is a guy on the show, which I'm gonna, I am gotta pull it up to see, cause he has an actual name. Uh, and that is, uh, let me, uh, uh, while I'm figuring out that, just could put personal space guy for now. But yeah, he has a show that is literally just called the personal space show, where he has a slideshow and he's like, all right, uh, welcome to the personal space show, you're favorable, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Whoa! Get watch my personal space, and he like clicks. He's like, step one. These are these are these are the steps to, for success for me. Okay, okay, let's go. Ready? One, personal space. Two, personal space. Three, keep keep out of my personal space. Number four, uh, personal space. And and he literally goes to the point where he's like, well, I I I love personal space so much. It's like I I don't even like wearing this skin I'm wearing. Oh. Uh. His own skin off on Jesus TV. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, there's there's a lot of side characters that I probably like I said I have not mentioned. There is yeah. um 
There's the, a ton uh, of them. Win, which Derek talked about last time, where one is a cook and one is a TV like reporter, and they both have shows at the same time. Yeah, they, they're amazing. So they're like moving around and shit. It's like, no, it's like, fuck you, I'm going to show up here. It's like, fuck you and your weather broadcasting, bitch. Like, that's funny. You have a uh, reverse giraffe where he's reverse like giraffe, a yeah. long body, short neck. Um, there's Mrs. Refrigerator. There's Baby. There's Baby Duck. There's one of my favorites, which I forgot almost almost took, which was Baby Legs, which is a cop, but he literally has baby legs. <laughs> He's like, Baby Legs, you're you're not getting enough done, so I'm partnering you up with Regular Legs, and it's like, <laughs> oh, this is a. I, I feel like this is a detriment to my character, and he goes to he goes to catch the criminal. And he's like, Okay, Baby Legs, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he's like oh oh i give up and it's like oh I'm, I'm coming baby legs i'm fucking regular legs and he just like tackles the guy <laughs> i also vaguely remember the video of uh, the velociraptor photographer and yeah. i love that yeah. i yeah. loved him i be a little upset that we didn't mention photography raptor um there is uh frankenstein there's frankenstein in this there's so many i mean most of the characters come from that episode which we'll talk about but yes yeah i think we got a solid squad here, yeah boy. uh four just said he thinks i snuck in and won was it the noob noob pick probably it had to be the noob, noob yeah pick. that's what i figured we'll see we'll put these on um i almost took elon tusk i was this close oh to yeah i i wanted to so bad but i i i i, I well i just i i love personal space <laughs> We're going to get you out of our personal space for a little bit. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with our top 10 ranking of the evening. Hi, I'm Josh. I like pizza. Do you like pizza? When the moon heats your eyes like a big pizza pie. We've let it coagulate. Show Greg. King of coagulation there. Coagulation um, is key. Ooh. Homemade Greek ranch. Do you like watching people eat pizza? Help me, because I'm on the quest to find the best pizza in Pittsburgh. Hand-forged pizza. Bit of bit of ichi. That's amore. Make sure you're sending in your recommendations for the best pizza in Pittsburgh, because I'm going to go, I'm going to try it, I'm going to hold it to my standards. It, and it's, it's the aftertaste is the barf, is where the barf comes Oh, yeah. In. I agree, it's Bob Pizza. Can your favorite pizza place pass the test? Find out. personal space for the end of the Rick and Morty show. We always have a top 10 at the end. I thought we had a great debate that was quote unquote great. Quote unquote I did this instead of this now. Rock on man. Rock on. Um, we're going to put that in the vote and hopefully we'll see where that goes at the end. But for the final stretch of this episode we're going to talk the top 10 Rick and Morty moments. They're all, I mean most of these are big ones that happen throughout like the four seasons. Currently, because there is a fifth season in the works, which I'm very, very excited to see. Adult Swim, you have a lot cut out for you. Hartman, I'm so excited. Let's move to number 10, which we talked about this a lot. I wanted to bring it in full. Number 10, Total Recall. Okay, the, the play on the Total Recall I love already, so. Oh, they do that a lot on this. Oh. Yep, on this there's show. so many different, like, what's your names of shit that's come up. Um... So this episode, as you can see, Greg, how many different side characters come into this one episode? Oh, my God. A lot. And these are all memories. Like, the whole point is that they are a parasitic race that inhabits, the, like, the planet or people that they're in. And they transform themselves into good memories so that they can stay within the family and not get killed. It's the oh. episode 
the episode starts off he's like oh i'm uncle steve hey yeah how you doing and nobody like everyone's like yeah uncle steve and rick literally takes a laser and shoots uncle steve in the head mm -hmm. and he turns out to be like this parasitic alien that's just like flopping around and it's like no we've been infected from then you get characters such as mr poopy butthole you get characters like photography raptor you get characters such as Hammerai, which is a samurai covered in meats. Like, it is absolutely hysterical what has come about with this episode. Sleepy Gary, uh, Tinkles, Mrs. Refrigerator, the whole nine yards, uh, Wizard Baby, Baby Duck, Baby Duck Man. Uh, just, there is a literal ghost in a jar, and its name is Ghost in a Jar. Mm. <laughs> There's also a, uh, a pencil with arms and legs that's short, like, its name is Pencil Vester. I thought about taking him. Yeah, I thought. I thought. So is it, so is this episode basically for everyone who loves the side characters? They just decide to put them all in one episode. Okay. Pretty much. And yeah. uh, like I said, these are these are all new. Like no one had seen these characters before this episode. Um, and they try to make sure they plant all these different like good memories that aren't actually real. Like going to see the Hulk musical and. And it's like, hey, I'm Cousin Vinny. We're walking here. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a play on just so many different things. And like I said, it ends with the family uh, obviously realizing that Mr. Poopy Butthole is a real character and escaping the parasites. Uh, great. If you haven't seen it, please check. I mean, check out all these. All these are on Hulu, like I said, all these episodes. Number nine, fighting with our inner toxins. So, this one is hilarious because uh, basically Rick and Morty go on this binge of adventures to the point where they are so, like, willing to explode that they go to a spa. And what you think ends up happening is that, you know, they get sucked into another universe or some shit where they're all green. And it turns out this spa separates the person and the toxins within that person. Mm -hmm. And they essentially put those toxins in that canister and they walk out. The toxic Rick basically does everything in his power. Like he's very, like it's all of Rick's bad traits. He's narcissistic, egotistic, like always believing his right to Morty's bad characteristics where he's self wallowing, self pity. He's like, he's like, oh, we're going to do it, Morty, bitch. He's like, oh, no, everybody hates me. I already know. I already know it. Like, <laughs> And to the point where, like, the actual Rick and actual Morty, they're going about their lives. And Morty is, like, kind of, like, bettering himself in ways, which is terrifying because he loses all his personality, but he becomes, like, very successful. He's, like, he's like in math class, like, dicking around. And, like, he's, like, oh, actually, uh, wouldn't that make you the teacher? He's, like, well, I was, like, Morty, that's something you should be suspended for, but I'm going to give you an A+. Plus. Mm -hmm. And it's... <laughs> He becomes, but, like, the popular kid in school and everything. Yeah. Like, his life's going pretty well. Yeah, and Rick's obviously is not. He's missing, like, what made him human. Mm. And that's essentially what happens. This episode teaches you to the point where it's better to live with your mistakes than to simply, like, disregard and throw them away. Which I love that you don't really pick up on these things unless it's at the end, but it really, it's a, it's more life lessons, man. It, it, is that every episode? Not a lot, but, well, no, I should say not a lot. For most. Okay. So All of them, wacky-ass adventures. Okay. So every episode is it's built around the wacky adventure, but there's also kind of like a hidden life lesson along with it. Pretty much, yeah. Huh. Okay. It's great. Uh, number eight. <laughs> get Swifty. You gotta get Swifty. <laughs> Shit on the floor. Time to get Swifty in here. So, uh, Greg, this one is all about uh, a race of basically humanoid heads that invade the Earth, and they'll only leave if they are treated with a great rendition of a pop song. Okay. And what they end up coming up with is they end up coming up with Get Swifty, <laughs> and it is literally like three buttons getting pressed, and it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> You gotta get Swifty. <laughs> get on the floor. Like, what the fuck? It's basically and, like a singing competition for like other galaxies and planets. Well, yeah, yeah. what ends up happening is they come to the Earth and it's like, 
show me what you've got. And what ends up happening is they do that. And then it's like, I like what you did. Good job. And it turns around and it's like ass. Like there's a literal butt that's on <laughs> of them. Of course there is. Of course there is. So what ends up happening is they, they transport Earth as almost like a qualifier to be in these mm -hmm. different galaxies or these different planets that they have to make the best song wins and the rest of the planets get wiped off. Yeah, they're just destroyed. And you see that when this like this one world is like, no, like music isn't for competitions for soul. Let us be free. It's like disqualified, and then yeah. it like, builds up the planet. We're like, oh shit! Like it is. <laughs> we also get a uh, wonderful rendition with Ice T in this. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> When what? He, becomes, he goes from ice tea to literally becoming water tea, which he becomes like a <laughs> tea made of water. And it's like time to crunch the numbers. And he like goes out with like two pistols. And he starts shooting all these different numbers. It's a lot, man. It's, it's uh, just it's craziness. The show's just craziness. It, I can tell. We almost took water tea too. It's like I t I'm not longer iced tea. I have a heart of gold. I have water tea. <laughs> it's so much, man. Um, number seven, uh, one of those picks. Where are my testicles, Summer? <laughs> the dog in this episode, Snuffles, which we actually shouldn't get because that's technically what he calls his slave name. Mm -hmm. So he is Snowball in this because his fur is white and fluffy. And what ends up happening is they create... They're bored with their dog. He's being rude. He's just peeing in the house. So Rick makes him intel like incredibly smart where he has a computer chip and he's learning basically a Planet of the Apes kind of scenario where he now gains recognition and becomes smarter than the people and creates this robot suit and walks out into Summer's bedroom and goes simply, where are my testicles, Summer? <laughs> they were removed. Where have they gone? <laughs> they literally like create an entire race of like dogs to take over the planet. Yeah, and like their own army, their own dog their, army. What they like the era? Like, it is a basic Planet of the Apes scenario. Hmm. I was gonna say that doesn't seem so bad being world with a lot of dogs. Well, man takes the place of dog. Like they are in cages and shit. Like that's hmm. that's what ends up happening. And uh. They, uh, there's a scene where but it plays on circumcision. And he's like, you are going to be in Jerry. You need to behave or Mr. Scruffles is going to screw up your um, <laughs> procedure. And Jerry goes, huh, you think you can threaten me with a haircut? And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, Jerry's not the so, brightest. Um, let's move on to number six, which is simply entitled Roy. Man, this was a trip and a half. Yeah. So what ends up happening, uh, they are basically in the galaxies, um, what is known uh, as Blitz and Chips, which is essentially like they're Dave and Busters. Okay. He sells a gun to this guy to get money to go to Blitz and Chips. And there is a game titled Roy, A Life Well Lived. And <laughs> Morty puts on the helmet and his eyes roll back in the head, and sooner or later, Morty is living out this life of a boy named Roy. He wakes up, and he's like, Roy, what's wrong? He's like, I was, I was having a nightmare. There was a man, he put this helmet on my head. And it's not only that, he goes through his life through high school playing football, and then he gets married to his high school sweetheart, mm -hmm. and then he loses his ability to play football. He blows out his knee to where he then owns a carpet shop and then he gets cancer it survives he, it he gets cancer. <laughs> my god go to work back at the carpet shop and then fall off one of the things to die and then it simply goes game over and morty's like what 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 the, what the, what the? And he comes back to his own life and it's like oh 55 years good job it's like you really kind of Wasted your 30s, though, with that bird-watching phase. Like, <laughs> the entire game is literally living the life of a person. Like, it's fucked. Damn. That's... I... that That's fucking messed up. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Uh, as, as great as this show is, it is screwed up to the whole point. To the point where we talk about at number five. Simply titled, Existence is Pain! 
The episode with the Meeseeks is by far one of the funniest episodes I can remember. Um, like, uh, like Bo said, the Meeseeks are tasked with a simple objective. Once they fulfill that, they die. But unfortunately, Jerry's objective is so complex that the Meeseeks that's helping him pushes another Meeseeks box. <laughs> And he's like, oh, oh, hi, Mr. Meeseeks. Hi, Mr. Meeseeks. And it's like, can you help me get two strokes off Jerry's golf game? Can do. <laughs> it gets to the point where, like, there's so many of them. And, <laughs> like, they're supposed to do their thing and die. And this yeah. one, he's like, I've been helping Jerry for two weeks. Two weeks is an eternity's time for Meeseeks. And instead of handling the situation rationally they just start killing each other to the point where they try to kill jerry to end the cycle entirely so they can be all dead yeah. and the one i'm saying literally shouts out just existence is pain <laughs> we all get that a little bit i love time. the concept that trying to help a golf score is the one golf that score. breaks them and some right. of them have like the golf hat on and everything golf swing. that's all he wants and it can't happen that, that's it's what i would use them for did you try standing straight? Always oh, trying. Did you try bending your knees and scrunching your shoulders? Oh, we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> it's it's incredible, man. Um, not as incredible as number four, though. I have a shirt of this. I don't think I can fit into it anymore, but that's not the point. Um, I'm Pickle Rick. Okay, explain the background of Pickle Rick because it's clearly something that everyone is all about. Greg, the episode literally starts with a voice of Rick calling for Morty, telling him to uh, flip the pickle over. You won't be disappointed. And it's just a face on a pickle. He's like, I turn myself into a pickle, Morty! A pickle Rick! <laughs> and he does it because there is a family therapy session and he turns himself into a pickle to get out of that family yeah. therapy. <laughs> yeah. There is a syringe that's supposed to drop at a certain time. They figure out that it has anti-pickle serum in it. His daughter, Beth, takes it to the therapy session. So he falls off because the cat, the family cat, starts, you know, having its thing with cucumbers and pickles that they think they're snakes. Huh. And it drags him into the sun to which there is rain and it pushes him into the sewer. Now, this one is funny because this movie, or no, wow, this movie, this sh episode plays off of the Die Hard franchise, which oh, is <laughs> so funny. He finds himself in, like, this high-tech government facility, and they won't let him escape, so he tries to just kill all of them to get out, only to end up facing a man named Jaguar, mm -hmm. whose daughter is being held by the government. <laughs> and it, it's, it's literally funny. I mean, he gets shot... And he takes a pickle from a sandwich, like one of those round pickles, and staples it to himself. And instead of using, like, alcohol, he uses uh, hot mustard packets to, like, <laughs> serenade it. The whole, this whole episode, it launched the whole aspect of Rick and Morty that is Rick and Morty of they can just fucking do whatever they want. There was no premise of him being a pickle, mm -hmm. but it was fucking incredibly funny. So this is essentially the the catalyst for the popularity of Rick and Morty. You'd say it's the pickle Rick. It was popular before all this, but it got even more popular after this episode. Like it's one of their most watched episodes by far. Mm -hmm. Ah, number three. What is my purpose? <laughs> I can't. So Rick builds this tiny little robot. To literally pass butter. And he's like, what is, it starts off, what is my purpose? You pass the butter, and he gets the butter, and he's like, thank you. And like, probably like a minute later, he asks again, what is my purpose? And Rick goes, you pass butter. And the robot literally looks, looks down, looks at his hands, he goes, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Just off to the point that his purpose in life is passing butter. Like, I mean, we've all felt that. Like, we've like, what is my purpose in life? And you find out maybe it's not what you want it to be at the moment. You're disappointed. I mean, this guy literally gets built to pass sticks of butter. Hey, somebody has to do it. That's true. That is but very true. The scene with this was one of the first renditions that I fucking love this show. 
because that is <laughs> it, it realizing that it's life is to pass butter goes just because oh my god and freaks <laughs> out <laughs> uh number two spoiler alert just so everyone knows three two one evil morty and the reglantis mix up so, so why is this a spoiler I, because this is a huge thing i'm just i'm just letting you know cause, okay so the episode of this is all supposed to be about uh, Rick and Morty going to the Sea of Atlantis. And what ends up happening is they go to Atlantis, but be- after they go, you are then treated to the quote-unquote Rick, the Citadel of Rick, which is all other Ricks across the universe, of di- or not of the universe, of different universes mm-hmm. and different Mortys. And what ends up happening <clears throat> even before this is that Morty and Rick have a run-in with what is known as Evil Rick and Evil Morty. And Evil Morty escapes not to be found again. And we find out that he was controlling the Rick the whole time, which is not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the Rick is controlling the Morty. And Evil Morty built the Rick out of robot parts. And so it's believed to be that he is a true evil genius. He comes back, again, spoiler, I know it's going to spoil out for a lot of people, but there is a election that is happening to determine the new head Rick. And this Morty runs and ends up winning. Well, it turns out that this Morty is actually evil Morty. Mm-hmm. And he gets rid of all, like he starts assassinating different Ricks like shuts down the school of Morty. So they stop following like they're the school of Morty literally takes commands from Rick and how to serve Rick. Was this the and, one with the, the police Morty? Is this yes, the same episode? The Morty's in this episode. <laughs> He's a fat Morty. That's so funny. Um, it's just like, why Morty's kill Morty's every day. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's just like, it's so much, but yes, there's a scene where like the Ricks won't let the Morty control because they say like, no matter what a Rick Morty, even a goddamn Jerry, nobody's like running their stuff. And so Morty asks, you know, which one of you agree? They all raise their hands. He snaps and they assassinate all those Ricks. So it is a big change of power and it's, it's amazing. Again, you have to watch all of it. To, I, I know that's kind of a spoiler for you, Greg, cause I know you want to watch it or hopefully after this, I don't know. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll have to ask him once you get to number one. That I, I know I just broke, but it, it's this is by far, I think, the most watched Rick and Morty episode because of how crazy it actually is. So. Okay. And with so little time left, we move on to our number one, Interdimensional Cable. These ones are great. This is by far the best concept of Rick and Morty that it has. And it is simply the actor getting drunk and improving all the stuff that they use for commercials. Like it's like, oh yeah, we're well, welcome to welcome to the uh, fakedoors.com. Here you got them. Oh, want open? Mm, want open? You got yourself a fake door. Or you go to, um, you know, Ants in My Eyes Johnson, where you get that from. Or you get the eyeball man who comes in and kicks the shit out of anybody that eats his eyeball cereal and it's a cereal commercial like the entire format of these episodes is dan getting drunk and acting out just different scenes and just burping the whole time and it's so weirdly funny that it's stuck it had a sequel Mm -hmm. interdimensional cable 2 they had a uh, plot of it that was a little different called Morty's Mind Blowers. I, I like that one. That was People a good one. People love the interdimensional cable because it's so out there. Yeah. It's yeah. so like, it's complete improv. Like yeah. everything is improv from now on from that episode. And so, it's good. I was going to so go like, this is like Dan like actually getting hammered and there's just coming up with this stuff yes. on his own. Yes. Like gr- Derek and I talk about this all the time that, which Dan is the same, is the guy that voices both Rick and, and Morty. Okay. And legitimately just gets, he, I've seen like behind the scenes on YouTube and everything where he gets a couple beers, a couple shots and just starts ripping them and then starts like, (laughs) 
I mean, I mean, you gotta go do this, like uh, fake doors and uh, all this other shit. Like, there's there's one where it's like uh, tiny or little bits, little bits. I love that. Um, it's like big heads, but like little faces. Like, mm. come on down to it's, it's like we got tiny eggs, tiny bacon, tiny fried steak. Holy shit, we got tiny people. Yeah. And the funny part about it is that it moves and it's like, it cuts to him like over top of a stall. It's like, eat some fucking shit, you stupid bitch. <laughs> Just kidding. It's, yeah, like, it's, it, it's basically like, like the characters are watching TV and they're flipping through channels and all these different shows are happening, different commercials. Okay, yeah. gotcha. There is, uh, there's one where it's a man, it's man versus car, where we take a man and place him up uh, against a car. Mm-hmm. And it's like, take the betting odds on the man, and then the man dies. Like, well, the car, the the, the car always wins. Like that's <laughs> that's how it's said to. It's not just me laughing. That's how it's presented. Yeah. What was like, the movie called? They oh, just, real two brothers. The two brothers <laughs> one. Can Can you look up that entire title sequence? Because it's just a long ass trailer, Greg. And it's like two brothers in a van, alien, tomato, monster, cat armada, which so, like, it just keeps going. And then it's like, it's just, oh, it's called Two Brothers. It's, it's just called Two Brothers. <laughs> okay, so also known as Alien Invasion, Tomato, Monster, Mexican, Armada Brothers, who are just regular brothers running in a van from an asteroid and all sorts of things in the movie. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. And then it's just like, and then it's just, it's just called Two Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> they had that entire on the screen for nothing. Um, there's one where it's like Jan Michael Vincent's, mm. where it's like um, Michael Quadrant Vincent C. It's like there's only like nine Jan Michael Vincent's that are supposed to be alive in the world, and they all protect like a like almost like a District 19 kind of oh. thing. They all protect like a certain district. Forger and, says Justin Rowland is the actor and Dan is the writer. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry about that. Justin Rowland. Thank you for that, Forger. Forger knows um, Rick and Morty. But yeah, man. Um, I love every aspect of this show, and these were the top ten reasons why. Greg, have I convinced you? I will not guarantee when I will watch it. But I promise you, I will now, just okay, because so of this. Just, uh, give it a try, like, just try I, I, try a couple episodes. I he did a hell of a sell job, so I will give it an effort. I don't know when, but I will put an effort on this. I mean, I could talk about this show day in and day out. I'm actually probably gonna go watch it after this. I love it so much. <laughs> we catch up on season four again before season five. Comes By the way, the, in the chat, they did uh, drop that season five debuts on this Sunday. Yeah. Oh, I love. So literally, I mean, I picked the perfect week for it. I yeah. Really, oh, it you picked it out. Yeah. yeah. Perfect timing. So I, I can finish uh, season four this week, and you'd be all caught be up. Today, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many different things. There's an episode where like they have a dragon, but <laughs> they try to soul bond to it, and they make it like an orgasm thing, like they have like a sexual encounter with a dragon with all this different shit. Like it's, it's so weird, but it's one of the funniest shows. I've ever seen. And I pray, Greg, that when you actually sit down and watch it, that you finally give it a chance and you realize just how great it is. Maybe, just maybe then, I will actually say, you know what? The ranking was right. No, don't ever that. say that. Don't ever well, say I am that. not going to, but yeah. I'm just going to uh, maybe yeah. give him that little tease right there. You zip back there. But, yes, yeah, season five of this drops on Sunday. Go check that out. Probably on Adult Swim. That's where it'll be. Um, you can also check out other content of us, Thoughts from the Bench. You have uh, Monday with uh, Draft Day. All our idiots get together and we draft different shit. Uh, never will I take the Civil War in a place where you'd want to go uh, back again. <laughs> I thought it was a sense of changing. and I. I oh, missed, God, I, man. I, I missed that one. So. I, had roll, I had to roll with it. I mean... Derek got shit for peak, uh, for picking uh, the brain as someone you want to rule the world with it. I thought that was a good pick, but it's like I think the should... brain's a great one, absolutely. But yeah, but when we, we it was like pop culture villains, and Derek picked the brain. I thought it was a good pick, but everyone was giving him shit for it. He's like, wait a minute, Austin took the fucking Civil War <laughs> for 
were places he'd want to go back in time to see. And you're giving me shit? But it, it, was, it was just so funny. Check that out. Uh, Thursday is always flagship show, Two Beers Deep. Check that out. All sports content and a ranking by me at the end. Middle, beginning, who the hell knows? Depends uh, on if uh, depends on what rankings got going on that day, and then uh, Josh makes it happen. Uh, Friday, we got the vault that drops. Uh, we're going to have close, I think, either Friday or Saturday. One of these days, uh, the trivia show is going to be back up. And then finally, you have all things betting and fantasy football that we're going to get into. I was real mad I missed this last episode. I uh, just woke up too late, but oh well. Uh, that is on Sundays at 10 a.m., and until then, I think it's the perfect time to end. Nice little 8 o'clock on the dot. Court is adjourned. We will see you next week, 6.30 on Twitch. Court is adjourned.